Hello, Snackers. This is Kareem Iskander. I'm a lead technical advocate with Cisco Learning and Certifications. Hey, everyone. I'm Matt DiNapoli. I'm a manager of developer advocacy with Cisco DevNet. Welcome to episode 112 of Snack Minute. Snack Minute is your weekly bite of learning where we teach you about coding, APIs, or just some cool stuff that we'd like you to know about. And the thing that we're going to talk to you about today is NSO Actions with my buddy, Jason. Jason, do you mind introducing yourself? Hi, everybody. I'm Jason Bell. I'm on Cream's team here in the Learning Certifications team as a senior technical advocate. And I have a background in network operations and as well in automation. So I'm excited to share what we have going on today. So what are we doing today, Jason? What are we talking about? Yeah, yeah. So just a quick overview. Cisco's Network Services Orchestrator uh, is a automation product that Cisco has where it, it, it provides network configuration management and orchestration where it reads in all the network configuration and allows you to configure different components. And for those who are familiar with the product, they are may not be as familiar with our the NSO actions. And so NSO actions, I'll have a demonstration and we can walk through a little bit to give an example uh, that we can even use on the DevNet Sandbox, allows a user to take any arbitrary code, I'm using Python, um, and, and plug it behind NSO's data model and extend the application. So then you can have your own custom code execute over the NSO's APIs. And so this might be useful if you're in an organization, let's say, I know when I was in Cisco IT, we, we used it for verification purposes. We also used NSO actions to kick off and maybe do an API call to ServiceNow to grab maybe the case number or a change request. And so it, because NSO itself, you know, yes, you can have custom code in different ways and different purposes, but its core strength is network configuration. And uh, this allows you to extend the application and add in your own functionality. And also, you know, it provides basically a, a way for you to have your own little quick tests, your own kind of self test to be able to verify the operational state. Jason, I have a question before you get started. Um, I'm relatively familiar with NSO, but I'm not familiar with NSO actions. Is this a, a version, um, a new a new version of uh, NSO that supports that? Or is this something that's been kind of hidden in there for a while? Yeah, it's something. I that when I've been using NSO for all, I was surprised that it had been there all along. <laughs> so it's one of those ah, friends that- How about that? <laughs> is in the, it's, it's in the background, but um, you kind of have to dig for it. That's why I wanted to bring it on the snack minute, because like maybe there's other people who have run the same thing and can, and can spark some creativity in, in different ways that they could use it. So yeah, it's definitely part of the core feature. It's been around for a long time, and it's just something I wanted to bring attention to. So I'll, I'll, first, I'll show a little bit of the data model and code behind what's going on, and then I'll, I'll show it in action so you can kind of connect the dots. Uh, so I'm sharing my screen. We have the terminal, and I have two packages loaded on there. One is called SVI Verify Example. Close, close that. So what, we have a template on there. Basically, this XML is saying we have for our we want to create layer three virtual interfaces. These SVIs across multiple switches. We have for each of our switches that we're going to load into our NSO service for each of those device names. We're going to create a VLAN based on a variable name of a VLAN ID and a VLAN name. But this will make a little more sense once I show the config in action, but just to kind of expose you to it before you see it. So this is the configuration template and a service that we're going to deploy to devices in the NSO DevNet sandbox. And we're going to create an interface and then our IP address is going to be in this 172.16.107.24 range. And you could make that a variable too, but I'm just keeping it static there for the purposes of teaching. Um, and the Yang file, basically the data model that is going to define what we are doing as our inputs for that service, those variables that I was showing in the template that are going to plug into that template and then push to the config to the devices. So these are the, the inputs. We have basically a list of switches and we have basically a link to the, the list of switches within our devices. We have a list of firewalls. And then all, all of this is going to be plugged into a self-test framework. So this is the one that has the NSO actions. And within the actions, you don't have to do it this way. You don't have to have a separate package. You can have it plugged in the same package. But the, since this was already kind of a self-made package that you, someone else had created, I, I just wanted to reuse their code and, and show that example, where, where basically we have um, some Python in the background that uses some fancy Python to say, hey, we have this Python class, and it, it's going to open a transaction into our um, NSO instance, and then it's going to run a series of commands for each of our commands in our command list. It'll then take the output 
and then put it into our um, log file. And, and later on, we're, it's going to check to see if there are certain strings present in, in that configure in, in that output that we're showing. So we're doing a list of commands. It's going to say, hey, is a particular string present? If, if it is, pass. If it is not, fail. And it sends it to all the different device types. Let me ask you this. Um, are, are there actions that are not supported? Or as long as you can talk to the, to the box via APIs, you can build an action for it? The, the, the actions is basically just the wrapper. So what I had there was Python code on top of the action. So, so the, the action is basically saying, hey, we're not going to create a service when you call this part of the data model. Instead, we're going to execute some Python code. Because typically when we write a Yang model in NSO, it's connected to a template, and then we're pushing config. The action is a different way of using the Yang. So, it's, so the Yang is, is providing us this structure of saying, hey, in, in, instead of pushing data into our template and pushing that template to the devices, we're taking that input into our Yang model, and we have inputs, um, which in this case are going to be a list of show commands and a list of, of pass or fail strings. And it's going to take those inputs and then feed it into our Python code and then do a series of actions. Got it. So in this case, it, it's, a, it's a more sophisticated example, but since Snack Mate, we want to do quick and kind of focus on, on the big splashy stuff. The, the self-test is, is the action package, and, and then the um, SBI verify is, is the, the actual template that would be what you're typically doing apart from an action. So, so the, the, this, this uh, first we're going to deploy the service. So the service is named SVI Verify Example. This is already on the NSO instance on the DevNet Sandbox. So you don't have to deploy it if you want to try this out yourself. And we're creating an instance of a VLAN 1 through 3, 7 and a VLAN name of SVI Demo. And we're going to push it to our dist sw switch 1. So that's going to push the, that, that XML template I was showing. Remember, we had the variables that we were plugging in. The, the switch name, the VLAN name, we had the IP address of 172, 16, so on, slash 24. That's what this is going to start plugging in, that VLAN ID and VLAN name into that template. And we're going to do the same thing now for the firewalls and, and, the switch, and a second switch. So we have a second switch, disk switch 2, we have disk switch 1, we have firewall 1. So we're, we're plugging these into those templates. So this is not the action part. This is just the configuration we're going to do that we want to run the action against to ver verify the output. Um, so now that we've created a service instance, we want to deploy it to the device, but we want to see that configuration before we push it, just to show what we're working with. We deploy it to three devices. We have our Edge Firewall 1, where we're, we have that SBI demo that we had plugged into our service um, Yang inputs, and the configuration. We have SBI demo plugged into our template there. We look up, we have for disk switch 2, VLAN 1 through 37 from that variable that we had plugged in, and 1 through 37 for the SVI. The description is a variable as well. IP address is, is static of the 172.16. And then we have the same thing for switch 1. So we have switch 1, switch 2, both have interface VLAN 1 through 337, and then our firewall config as well. So that's what's going to be sent to the device. We can commit, and I'll push the config. So that's just all the service part. And now for the action part. It looks, it looks from the text side a lot like what we're working with on the service side, but behind the scenes, it's, it's going to be running that Python code. So let's go to the top. Okay. And so, so what I have here is I have that self-test package. So I've already, it's already installed on the DevNet Sandbox for other people to use as well. And we need to point to that service instance. So we had named that service instance called first instance. We said, hey, um, action, look at the service instance, and then plug in a series of commands. So this series of commands is the actual action part. So we're not, we're not deploying a service now, we're just referencing a service and using that data to then plug in our, our show commands. So we have our arguments of, we want to ping, P-I-N-G, arguments of 172.16. So we're going to ping the IP address and then check to see if anything in the text says no route to host as a fail string. And I know a lot of people also use uh, uh, Pi ETS with NSO, and that's definitely a great way to do things. You could have NSO actions on that side as well. This is just like the most base, not adding a lot of fluff, not adding a lot of compl compl complications. Um, so what, what we have, what I did while, while we were talking here is that I sent three different series of show commands. So we have a show IP interface brief command. We have a, a ping command that I know is going to fail. It has an IP address that's not going to work. And then we have one that's going to work. And so after we've sent those commands, we can then, um, we did our self test, test execute. So it's going to send the ping commands, going to send the show IP interface brief commands. 
And then in this case, it's, it's actually going to store those, those values into the NSO database, so that way we can reference them later. So right now, it's sending all those show commands. And so the real power of these actions is that in this specific in instance, and we have the ping outputs, it got printed out to the screen, the show IP interface brief outputs, as well as the ping outputs that worked. And so it, it was executing that Python code I showed you at the beginning. And then it basically takes that information, checks based on Python code to see if th there was a fail or a success. And then we can do using this package of SPI verify on self test result. We can see that for each of our tests, we have three tests. The ping test worked, the show IP interface brief worked. We had the successful um, new VLANs. And then the last one failed because we did a ping test to an IP address that wasn't going to work. And, and all, all this examples, one of the reasons that I brought this up is also because we have on the new, the U platform where we, we're all learning, we're all doing new things. This is similar to one of the tutorials I have on there. I have sh showing how to do NSO actions on the most basic example. So the one we have on the tutorial is showing how to double a number. So you, you run the action, you give it an input of two, and it gives you four. Um, and that, that's I think the level I want people to get started with, but this is showing you kind of where you can go from beyond there. That you can take that doubling a number, take an input of two and double it to four. You can take that and extend it into lots of different ways. And we also have um, a full on NSO course, Python with NSO course yep. that you in Cisco U learning path actually that you could um, check out today. So there's a lot of resources after this. If snackers, if you want to go check them out on u.cisco.com. We have an advanced Python course that's being released on you in, in August. And so that's one of the reasons I wanted to showcase this, showcase this is just to show, hey, we have NSO stuff already on the U for tutorials, and we have more stuff coming as well on, on the U for, for courses available for people who want to check that out. Um, I did have one question before we let you go, Jason. So this tool seems like something, I mean, just the three of us sitting here, we all went, oh, uh, that's something that's been here for a while. Um, I, I kind of see this as a situation where um, someone's relatively familiar with NSO, they've been using it for a while, they're pretty comfortable with it, and then they hit a point where they're like, oh, I keep doing this thing over and over again. Um, yeah. You know, can I take advantage of that, the actions to be able to do that? Or um, a scenario where they hit a net or something that doesn't fully support everything that they want to do. Um, can it hit both of those scenarios? Yeah, yeah I, th I think definitely when it comes to making configuration changes, it's not a best practice to use NSO actions, but it could be done. I'm not saying it's the technology is there, um, and, and, but I, I would say for NSO actions, you're right. Exactly. If, if you want to take the, and so basically you're extending the NSO application. You're adding new commands. This SVI verify example, running this Python code was not. It's not in the core NSO application. It's just all this custom data model, and then that data model is log, loaded in, and then extends the application and has our code running behind it. And so you you could put whatever you want behind there if you have your, your different internal for your company's business applications or certain checks or certain you need to you know update your ip address management i know some people use that sometimes for working with netbox or different things like that so there's lots of different directions you could take this um and and it definitely adds a lot of flexibility and, and actually even next week cool. I'll, I'll be talking more more about nso we'll, we'll be using nso as a teaching tool to show you how yang works and as, and, and using nso and the data models to show you basically some of the basic Yang different components and, and how um, it can be used as a teaching tool to learn them and visualize them. Well, uh, awesome. unfortunately, yeah, that's all the time we have, Jason. Thanks for showing us this awesome feature of NSO. And um, for those of you that are comfortable with NSO out there and working with it, um, you know, check out NSO Actions and the material on Cisco U uh, in support of it. Um, and come back next time when Jason's on to extend his uh, NSO uh, tutorials, um, you know, Jason, Jason's close to hitting the five timers club. So <laughs> being with and, and always, always glad. Yeah. Always glad to have him back. So uh, thanks for showing us this Jason and uh, we'll, we'll talk to you guys next time. Thanks Jason. Thank okay. you snackers.